Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ben, this is Talking Board Games. Welcome back as we, uh, you know, talk about board games. Today I'm talking about a big one. It is probably the biggest game. No, I can't say that. It's big, okay? It is Batman Gotham City Chronicles. I don't know if that's all in the frame. Um, but anyways, I thought it'd be a good idea to do a review on this one quickly before the uh, Season 2 Kickstarter launches. So uh, let's get to it. So Batman Gotham City Chronicles is a, uh, a board game, a miniature skirmish game, where one player is going to play as the villains, and they're going to be controlling a whole horde of uh, henchmen and goons and thugs. Along with typically a villain, iconic villain or two, be it Bane or the Joker or uh, Dr. Freeze. And then you will be playing up to three hero players who control one hero. Um, be it Batman or Robin or Catwoman or they have Nightwing and uh, Green Arrow. Tons of different characters from the, uh, from the universe. And you have a mission and you basically just need to accomplish it within the given amount of time. Pretty straightforward, right? You're gonna move around the map, fight some guys, try to interact with some uh, bombs or computers or whatever it may be to fill whatever the objective is for the scenario. That's the gist of it. Um, the game is run through a, uh, a really tight system where you're managing your, basically your energy is your life. And as you spend this, it is going to give you more actions but it will weaken you and cripple you as you move forward until you rest and recover said actions. It's a really great system. Um, lots of dice you're going to be rolling and uh, fighting, interacting. On the outside looking in, it's very simple. Uh, but I guess maybe we should look at what I think about the game. Uh, so first, the good. Batman Gotham City Chronicles has uh, some things that are really going for it. The first is that it's very cinematic. You actually feel like you are the villain or the heroes as you're trying to accomplish this mission as the timer's counting down, as, you know, these swarm of bad guys come in and you're fighting them off and it, it, it feels like you're playing the action scenes from a Batman movie. You know, all cooperating together, splitting up, going to tackle the different objectives. Really, really enjoy the feeling you get when you play this game. Um, next is that energy management that I talked about. Uh, it, it makes, it's clean. Let's just, it's a clean system that creates a lot of tension. It's so simple to say, uh, yeah, I'd better make this a successful attack. I'm going to spend an extra two cubes to most likely guarantee that I knock this guy out. And that's all well and good. But now when it comes back to you on defense, guess what? You may only have one cube to defend with. And you use that cube to defend with. Okay, I'm good. I was able to defend block against it. Now I'm recovering two cubes. What am I going to do on my turn with two cubes? That's, you know, that gives me an action and a half, if that, and I'm not a chance to defend or reroll or anything like that. So you really have to be careful as you're managing those cubes. Not overexerting yourself. But if you play it far too safe, then you're obviously not going to be successful. So uh, it creates a really good... Uh, amount of tension there. Lastly, the production on this is just phenomenal. Um, the miniatures look great. There's a ton of them. The boards are just gorgeous. Like, uh, they seem more like a piece of art than they are a play surface to play on. Um, so set up on the table, the game looks really good. Uh, the little bat tablets and the river and stuff, like, it, it's a nice production. You definitely feel like you're getting a premium product, which is what you want when you pay for you know a game this cost and uh, go through the whole Kickstarter waiting process. You want a premium product, and that is what you're getting. Unfortunately, the game is not all good. There is a couple, what I view as negative, we're going to call them the bad. Uh, first off, there's lots of dice rolling. This may not be bad for all, but for me, it's not... The game revolves around the dice. That's what it is. So you attack. Roll some dice. I'm going to defend. Roll some dice. 
Ooh, I better re-roll this. Roll the dice. Okay, actually, now that I've defeated you, I'm going to interact with this computer terminal. Roll some dice. Okay, you blew up the computer terminal. But that's okay, because I'm going to prime this bomb. Roll some dice. Everything is resolved with dice. Um, and while well, that can be tedious, it's not really in the game. I, I just wish there was more more depth to the the actual gameplay it when everything is just dice 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 it gets old people could complain that it's very luck driven oh if you're rolling that much dice the whole game is just a luck fest and yes while there's a lot of luck given in any one particular test uh as you roll those dice i think you're rolling them enough over the course of the game that percentages start evening out and you know statistically speaking things are going to stay pretty true to what they should be. So in that aspect, it's not a huge negative. It's just a lot of dice rolling, and it kind of slows the game down. Is every time you want to do something, you got to find the correct dice and roll them and resolve them and re-roll them. But that, that is what the game is. And if you know that going into it, it's not going to be, you know, this huge surprise. So um, next is you can have some unrewarding turns, unfortunately. Uh, this can come from that energy management system, which as I stated earlier, was really good. But if you've poorly mismanaged your energy or were forced to spend it in an uh, inopportune way, now you're spent, uh, you're stuck spending a turn just resting as a hero, which is no fun. Yeah, you get you know a lot of energy back, but you don't get an active turn in the game. You can reroll your on you know on defense and have those opportunities to defend yourself, but doing so just burns through those cubes that you so preciously just earned back. And when you miss one of you know some games are seven rounds or less, when you miss one maybe two of those seven rounds, are you playing a third you know two thirds of the game? Are you missing a fourth of the game? You could look at it that way, and you know, the turns, this game can kind of drag out a little bit as people discuss their action. And if you know you're not doing anything that round, it could probably be a little, you know, disheartening. As the villain, um, you know, there might be some, a couple of gimme turns where you're kind of just cycling through your river, trying to get stuff out, and you're not really anticipating doing much with your characters. And so you could have a round where it's also kind of anticlimactic. And, and you know, that's just part of the game. You can't avoid this. So just know that going into it. Once again, this may not be a bad point, but if you know it going into it, it's not going to catch you off guard. But unfortunately, we have some ugly. Uh, the ugly here is going to rear its ugly head as soon as you get the game and open the box and start going through the rule book. The rule book is atrocious. Guys, I have read many, many rule books. I enjoy reading rule books. It's actually one of my favorite parts, you know, about getting a new game is opening up, pulling out the rule book, and just diving in and seeing what this game has to offer because I can tell what a game has to offer from reading the rule book. This one, man, it's like flow chart upon flow chart of choose your own adventure, go to this page, that page, and when it's a 50 plus page manual, oh, and the thing is, is the game is not that complex. You heard me in the beginning. It's a tactical skirmish game. You are moving around the map and rolling dice to attack each other. That is it. And somehow, somehow they stretch those rules to cover 50 some odd pages. Ay, ay, ay. So just be prepared. The online videos done by Board Game Coffee were excellent. They really got to the point and cleanly explained what's going on in this book. So I recommend you go give those a watch if you're having any concerns as you're playing. And given that the rule book's very terrible, it doesn't help that uh, there is just this massive amount of rules you have to learn before you can play the game. I don't want to say there's so much rules as they are just intricacies. Uh, so this could be the player abilities. You know, you got three, four double-sided pages full of player abilities. And a lot of these abilities are kind of redundant. Um, so you have like the lock picking one, 
which gives you X amount of successes on a particular skill in a scenario that involves lock picking. And then you have the munitions expert, which gives you X amount of skills towards, uh, I mean, successes towards a mission scenario specific uh, that deals with explosives or something. And, you know, and they're all listed kind of in these odd orders on the player boards. And so before the games I've had to play with new players, basically we go around the table and I say, tell me what your picture looks like for all of those. And I will read to you from the back of the manual what that does. And while the descriptions in the back are good and they make sense and the player understands, okay, it's like five or six per hero character. And those are hard to remember. And so in my games, I think, you know, the heroes for the most part use two, maybe three of those because they can't remember or keep track of all of those. And that's just the start. These boards, while gorgeous and, you know, from an aesthetic point of view are fantastic, from a rules standpoint, I've had a lot of ambiguity with line of sight, the different elevation changes, and uh, what is accessible from where, and uh, just is that a wall, is that a room, can I move through there? So really you need to consult, almost memorize, have on hand those uh, the pages at the back of the scenario book that show these board breakdowns. And even then, you know, the different letters with the, the line of sight and can, you know, straight line through here. It, it gets tedious trying to real, figure out, you know, what you can and can't do per the map. And that'll, you know, uh, and while I say these are uglies for the game, they'll be resolved with time. You'll learn, you'll recognize and memorize all of those skills. The boards will become pretty standard for you as you play on them a couple times. So, it's it's not like that's going to be a permanent negative towards the game. Same with the rulebook. I mean, once you know the rules, it's not a big deal. You don't you won't be referencing the rulebook very much. But in the initial get go, just be aware that that may be a little frustrating as you try and figure this stuff out. In the end, though, Batman Gotham City Chronicles is it it is what I was hoping it would be. It is a game that is fun. It is very true to its IP, and and that's what I wanted. I wanted this big showpiece game that people were excited to try, you know, Batman and fighting the villains, and, and here's the scenario, and let's do this. Um, well, I haven't played all the scenarios. I've played a couple, and given that there's not a ton of different type of actions you can take on your turn, and they're just rephrasing the actions you're going to do, whether you're priming a bomb or, you know, creating an antidote or injecting something into someone. You're doing the same skill checks. But I feel like that's okay because it's the scenario, it's the story that you're playing out that is what is captivating, not so much the depth of actions. The management system there is enough to give this game some legs to really stand on. The rest is just you know, that story you're telling together with your friends. Were you successful? Did, did the villain swoop in at the last minute and knock out the hero right before he was about to accomplish his goal? It, that's cool. And that's what I wanted from this game. And hopefully that's what you want too. Um, if you're looking for something more than that, you may be disappointed. But in the end, I encourage you to go check out their Kickstarter coming out here on the 4th, June 4th, and uh, see what they have to offer. I'm definitely going to go poke in and look at the uh, the expansion stuff uh, quickly on that I don't know how many boxes you need for a game these are stored uh, pretty packed full of stuff given that it's the big boxes with the miniatures inside and the plastic and so you could take those out and just bag them and stuff and have a lot more room but then oh man, setting up the snares would take even longer um, so, I, I don't know how many boxes I want for this game. I know the all-in. I didn't do the all-in the first go-around. I just did the base pledge, so I got the two boxes. But, you know, having four or five, six boxes, A, storage, B, transportation, and C, trying to dig through all that to get the stuff you need for each scenario would just be a nightmare. So, I'm like I said, I'm going to be cautious as I go and look and see, but if I feel like there's something of value that I can add in a single box or two, uh, I may definitely pull the trigger on it. But in the meantime, I've got 20 some odd scenarios to uh, play through and enjoy both as various heroes and as the villain player. So, those are my thoughts on Batman Gotham 
City Chronicles. I enjoyed it. I'm willing to wager you will too. Most people seem to be. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to give me a like, share, subscribe if you uh, got anything of benefit out of this. I enjoy doing this, but it's nice to hear that others enjoy me doing it as well. But uh, yeah, until next time, thanks, and uh, keep playing those games. There's a lot of them, so don't fall behind, because you'll never, never come.